out as Contessa. Here for the show, I see. Where's the zombie cheerleader? I have no idea. Why would you think I would know where she's at? She must be running late tonight. Anyway, we've got to get in here to get the show started. Let's go. Okay. Quickly. Ah, quickly. Fast. Fast. Faster. Harder. Faster. Harder. Faster. Yeah. Is it time? In here. girl, see The monster madhouse. Oh, the time. <laughs> <laughs> Welcome to the Monster Madhouse. Tonight, we have for you, the public's audience, a frightening, frightening documentary film called The 10,000 Leagues of the, 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 ten, the, the League of 10,000 Phantoms. No, oh, it's Phantom. the Phantom from 10,000 Leagues. Come on, it's about some bloody, uh, uh, you know, squid or something out in the ocean that's supposed to hurt people. I just kill them. Okay, I kill then. monsters. I hate monsters. All right, take two. Welcome. The film is The Phantom from 10,000 Leagues. 10,000 Leagues. I don't know what a league is, but I think it's a lot. It's pretty deep. And Apparently, by the looks in this movie, don't be fooled, because you only have to go out one league for this monster to get you. And you'll notice in this film, as soon as it starts, in the first three minutes, the monster gets somebody for lunch. And then next thing you know, you see bubbles coming up out of the water, probably from the monster having gas from eating the guy. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we've got the entire team here tonight studying this. We've got our, our mystical alien science mystic medium. soothsayer medium. Large, extra large, whatever, but he likes medium. Jonathan Edgers. Uh, Greetings. Over the next two hours, I'll guide you for spiritual enlightenment. And whatever. How to help us fight. Let's go and kill the damn monster. We're all just standing around here looking like, you know, pretty or something. And of course, we've got Dr. Boron here, a specialist which I have called to bring in to help me bring back Dr. Elixir. Um, what was your full name again, sir? I... Leonard Maximilian Boron. Leonard Moron. Maximilian. Dr. Moron. Dr. Dr. Moron. Dr. Moron. Dr. Moron. Boron. Boron. Dr. Boron. Who is a reptile expert who will be helping Dr. Elixir once he shows up, which you'll see later. And we have his close associate, Mr. Excuse me, Dr. Quote unquote, Denny Beitzer. Why are we talking about 
He licks her anyway. Yes. He's such a pansy, you know. He's oh, good God, there are a couple of monsters there. I'm so afraid I should run away. Uh, that's not me, mate. Yes. I his, kill monsters. His so alter, I do. His alter ego studies them, shoots them with cameras. He shoots them with guns. Mm -hmm. We also, of course, have our resident. Wonder Wiz, super bionic human, half human, and computer. Cybernetic organism, actually. There sir. you go, yes. Mm -hmm. Gizmo Doohickey. Yes, indeed. The famous Greetings. Gizmo Doohickey. Um, who you can reach at Gizmo Doohickey at monstermadhouse.com. Mm -hmm. Actually, you can go to monstermadhouse.com to follow our adventures, our show, and all these warnings. And Gizmo is, of yes, course, sir. the webmaster who handles all of the computer stuff, so you'll be going through him to get to us. Digital domain is my main concern. Domain attraction. And, of course, we also have our, we think he's Russian, our uh, nuclear-created uh, 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 being who do battle, does, really does the serious battle with the monsters. Ivan the Terrible. Depends on who you ask. Oh, he smells terrible. Yeah. He's... Uh, he wants to vaporize everything, and uh, so you Speaking will... Speaking of vapor. Yes, we will be sending him out during the program, and of course we also have the lovely and talented Countess Contessa Vanessa. so happy to be here tonight. Yes. And she has apparently brought some snacks and cakes and drinks and stuff for us tonight, which is very strange. Because she usually isn't very nice to us at all. That's doesn't. not true. I'm always nice. Know you about. don't know what nice is. Hey, be quiet. What are you talking about anyway? Yeah, but apparently it seems like a good gesture, so she brought a bunch of stuff for us all to eat, but we haven't seen the zombie cheerleader at all. Uh, Sally is mysteriously missing uh, late for the show or something. She's probably off having a snack or something. Have you seen her anywhere? Yeah, hey, what would you think I've seen her? Just don't curious, you know. Like that. You girls sometimes, you know, like to... Uh, Run off and, you know, powder your noses together so yeah, you haven't I don't doing... know where she is at all. Okay, I won't believe you on that. But, uh, anyway, this, uh... The, the lie detector here. Dr. Denny bites her. Uh, what, what, what do you think about this case so far? What do you know about this? Thank you, Contessa. I can fix well, that. Well, seen is a, is a bloody squid that likes to hump people's legs. I think well, we should go down and blow it up with some dynamite or something. Now, that might get a little messy. Um... I like Nessie. I'm all right with Nessie. Nessie. What? No, this isn't Nessie. Talking about. Nessie is in Loch Ness in Scotland, not no. Nessie. Nessie, mate. Ness. Do you speak no. bloody English? No, barely. I'm going through a translator. You like Dr. Luxembourg? British wanker. Anyway, we're going to get to tonight's Andy. film, The League of 10,000 Phantoms. Phantom at 10,000 Leagues. The Phantom Only from 10,000 Leagues, starring a bunch of people who are probably dead. What's wrong with dead people? Dead people? Dead people?
Don't touch that. William S. Grant, Special Investigator. Department of Defense, Washington. Well, I guess that makes it pretty official. Yes, I guess it does. His body is rigid with burns. The boat's charred, too. Yet there's no sign of fire. We better get him out of the water. I'll take care of him myself. Just thought I'd give you some help. all my vital statistics, let's have yours. Name, address, occupation, things like that. And the name's Baxter, Ted Baxter. The address, local hotel. Occupation, beachcomber and tourist. Length of stay, indefinite. Will that do? Tell me, how did you happen to pick this particular place? Know anybody in town? No. I have a letter of introduction to the head of the College of Oceanography here. Professor King? Which explains why I'm here at this particular minute. I was on my way to see him at his home when I stumbled in onto this. College of Oceanography yesterday, didn't I? That's right. I'm George Thomas, Professor King's assistant. You seemed a little anxious not to be seen. Well, I saw two strangers standing over a corpse. Not being the hero type, I decided this was no place for me. You planning to do a little diving, Mr. Thomas? This late at night? I'm an oceanographer. The ocean's my business, day or night. Anything particularly interesting around here? You'll keep out of this. You better not do any diving around here for a while. I want you to forget that you're even here tonight, understand? You're soaking wet. So I am. I saw a wonderful marine specimen when I went in after it. With the college on vacation, you're spending more time there than ever. I hardly see you anymore. I've never seen you this detached from me, from reality. I'm working on breathtaking things, Lois. Great things. And you still won't tell me what it is? Not yet. You've got your own staff consumed with curiosity. Even your secretary has asked me if I know what it is you're doing behind that tightly locked lab of yours. She's a sneaking, prying female. I should fire her. And I suppose George is quizzing you, too. A little. I think he feels a deep resentment because you cut him off from your work so. He's an opportunist, not a scientist. I don't trust him nor Ethel. They're both spying on me. I'm not here. I, I'm in bed. I've been in bed an hour. An hour, you understand? Oh, won't you come in? Thank you. Is Professor King here? I'm sorry, he's asleep. He went to bed an hour ago. Oh, I see.
Are you sure the professor's asleep? Tell him that Ted Baxter's here. It's urgent. What do you want him for? Please tell him. Dad? Dad? Yes, must be nice to be at the beach, you know. All that sand, all those pretty girls with those long legs and no, all that. I don't think that moron had any idea what he's doing with that bleeding Geiger counter. Yeah, I know. I wasn't even looking at the Geiger counter. I was looking at the. Hey, hey, hey. Ah. the anyway, very, very scary stuff. Right at the beginning of the movie, somebody gets taken out. Blammo, just like that, and uh, kind of makes me hungry too. Uh, Countess Contessa has brought us some lovely oh. snacks, some horse doovers for everybody to, to enjoy some horse doovers. Horse maneuvers. Yes, horse maneuvers. These are, uh, you know, everybody knew her, but you know who knew her best? The horse manure. The best of all, the horse manure, yes. No, thank you. I think I'll take no, uh, you can take them. No, you please, take them. Look at those, look really good, but. This is really out of character for her to be being so nice and wanting to feed us. Usually she's... Yeah, it makes you think there's something else going on Trying here. to get us out of the way, you know, usually. So I really appreciate this. And uh, we still haven't heard from the zombie cheerleader. We don't know where she is, but uh, this creature, uh, what is your take on this? Oh, it's a... What's he killed by humping people's legs? Yeah. <laughs> it's the most ridiculous thing I've Looks ever like seen. I mean, they have to, good God, this thing's like, you know, the it's people, got a head it can't even hold up. And, uh, you know, I can't see how the people can't, like, uh, you know, just punch the thing in the bloody mouth or something. Well, the, just, they don't understand yeah. that because they're terrified in fear, they're paralyzed. Yeah, you know, they've got the all these monsters. spear guns about, and nobody's picked up a bloody spear yes. gun and shot the stupid thing. Well, maybe they have, but they don't know it's there, so you have to know. I mean, every time you go swimming, do you have oh. a spear gun? Oh, yes, you know, you, you got I the, do, but... You've got oh, the little God. worm in the, hiding in the bushes, and he's going to come down, what? You know? Hey, come here, mate. Like, he's really going to come right down to the cops. You know, it's these quite, are like federal agents or something. It's you quite know. possible. And here's this guy like walking down. Oh yeah, yeah, come and arrest me. Oh, I'm the dead. <laughs> these are quite good. It kind of tastes like mint, like uh, merda. It has a little merda flavor to it, and it's kind of mint. It's like eating chocolate and brushing your teeth at the same time. Actually, Gizmo, analyze this. Uh, sugar-based yeah, uh, nutrient supplement. Need to do that. Just eat it. Sugar-based nutrient supplement, sir. Doctor, sure it's quite harmless, actually. Oh, I think uh, we've well, lost one already. Um, 
Oh well, look, his, yeah. his socks and shoes are wet too. It looks uh, like he's been doing some experiments out in the Good I'll tell you what, let's, oh, great. let's get this guy some CPR. Uh, we'll running it through the carbon <laughs> spectrum analyzer. I, think, I, I really Gizmo, hit him! Analysis. Hit him! I don't know what's going on, but uh, anyway, uh, well, we gotta move back in here. here I would uh, stay away. Scan him out. I think dog. he's picking up some radiation. Is that radiation, Gizmo? Uh, Just no, like sir, in the movie. No, sir. It, it, it's showing actually that Just there is some type of toxin within the uh, um, cooking. Uh, yes. Sugar-based uh, nutrient supplement there that you're consuming. I knew it. Just like yes. in the movie. Yeah, let's Indeed. Let's do it again. Well. No, I t no, I'm never wrong. I think. Uh, Thank you. What we ought to do is probably go back to this movie and find out some more clues. Maybe we can find out a way to help this guy. Uh, anyway, back to the Phantom from Ten Thousand Phantoms. Leagues, leagues, sir. Leagues. Yes. Bloody leagues. Right. <laughs> My friend, the beachcomber. Supposing you tell me what your great interest in this thing is, Dr. Stevens. You work fast, don't you? Oh, I've learned quite a lot about you, Doctor. You'd be surprised how well Washington knows you. Care to hear how famous you are? Dr. Stevens, oceanographer, one of the leaders in this field, author of two highly controversial books, Biological Effects of Radiation on Marine Life and Nature's Own Death Ray. You have been busy, Mr. Grant. There's more. Dr. Stevens, in a laboratory experiment, successfully activated the hydrogen isotopes in heavy water to form an atomic chain reaction. He called this development the first workable death ray. Suppose you tell me what you're doing with that Geiger counter. Well, I told you I thought the boat showed radiation burns. I wanted to verify it. I did. Scientific curiosity, you might say. And using the phony name, what's that for? That's for reasons of my own. I watched you yesterday, the way you looked out there, as if you expected something like this was going to happen. Am I to consider myself a suspect? What happened out there seems to tie in pretty closely with your own experiments. The evidence, if you can call it that, was highly circumstantial. Washington tell you anything else about me? Enough to make me keep my eyes on you. You know, if you leave me alone, I might be able to help you with this. And then again, maybe not. Willie Harrison's boat this morning, burned like the others. They ain't found his body. That makes three of the Phantoms got. You know what they're saying in town? That nothing like this ever happened until they opened the school here. I can't say that I blame them. The way the professor's been acting, locking himself up in his room, he won't even let me in there to clean it. And all those noises coming from that room. I've got work to do, Andy. And that young one, George. What about George? He's following the professor around. Follows him everywhere. I've seen it. Hiding behind trees. Watches him all the time. It ain't normal, this carrying on. What's not normal, Andy?
I'm not to be disturbed, you understand? Yes, sir. Got there, Ethel. Faintest piece of crap. HEF increased point fifty six dash twenty four point sixty four dash thirty two point seventy dash eighteen. Keeping right up with the professor, aren't you, George? I'm one step ahead of him. I've got to get into his lab, Ethel. You've got to help me get in there. It's worth a lot of money to me. To you, too. I could tell him what you're up to. You could. But you won't.
Hi there. Uh, tell me, how did you leave your house? Through the door or through the open window like your father did last night? Through the door. I leave the window exits to Dad. Join me in a swim? No, I'm a little winded. How about you joining me in a rest? Maybe I can pick up some of that color you have. A care for a cigarette? No, no, thanks. Is something the matter? No, no. You seem a little nervous, Mr. Baxter. Why don't you call me Ted? Mr. Baxter sounds so formal, especially here at the beach. All right, Ted. Uh, too nice just to sit around. If you're not coming in for a swim, then I think I'll go in alone. Now, look, you can't go swimming. I like being told what to do. Well, it's not a case of my telling you what to do. It's just that it isn't safe out there. I think you're being a little ridiculous. Look, I've spent all my life near the water. I can handle myself under any situation. But I'm afraid you can't in this one. I'm going to insist that you stay out of the water at least for a while. Insist? Yes, you, you must trust me. You really mean that, don't you? I really do. Let's just say that I'd feel better knowing that you were safe here on the beach. For personal reasons. You ought to do that more often. Do what? Smile. I like it. Oh. Well, all I need is a bit of encouragement. And you've given that to me. down to the supply room and get some ocean current charts. Yes. Professor King, I wonder if I might have a few words with you alone. Ethel, I believe you were on your way down to the supply room. I called on you at your home last night, but you'd gone out for a walk through an open window. Yes, my daughter Lois told me that a Mr. Baxter had called. I got a terrible scolding on your account. I'm afraid you ruined my favorite device for getting out of the house when I can't sleep. Professor, uh, I saw a fisherman's body washed up on the shore last night. These men get very careless. They think they rule the sea, but it's just the opposite. The sea rules us, Mr. Baxter. Uh, this man wasn't killed by a natural force. His body was rigid with radiation burns. I think whatever killed him was man-made. Indeed. <laughs> Very interesting. Although not within my scope as an oceanographer. Just what is it you want of me, Mr. Baxter? Well, I'd like a detailed study of the ocean in this vicinity. The depth and the composition of the floor. Anything that you might have. It'd take a little time to gather them. I'd like them as soon as possible. Oh, I told my daughter I wouldn't work this afternoon. Why don't you come to the house about three? Say, if you get there before I do and Lois is out, just go on right in. The house is generally unlocked. Well, that'll be fine. And by the way, I take it you are working with Mr. Grant, the federal investigator. You might say so. I hope you found the conversation interesting. You're an inquisitive woman, aren't you, Ethel?
Oh, whoa. Freaky stuff, man. Did you see that book? Oh, God, I hate reading books. Ah, let's have a lot of pictures, especially the kind that fold out one extra flap. Those are the good kind. But have you read this rubbish? <laughs> Look at this bloke. He doesn't know what he's talking about. How You're a radioactive make, monster. You don't radioactive, make a radioactive monster, monster in 14 days or less, Dr. Ted Stevens. Mm -hmm. The only good radioactive monster is a dead radioactive monster. That's right. By the way, doctor seems to be okay. Uh, it turns out that it was just it weren't sick or anything or radiation. What was it that? Uh, uh, that movie was so horrendous. It was more tranquilizing than Teletubbies. So I was out like a you know a life. So it was the movie yeah. that that got him. Actually, it is kind of bad, but you gotta be careful and pay much attention because it's very frightening, and you can learn a lot of survival <laughs> techniques not from the people but from the monster itself. Mm -hmm. Here you go, sir. Um, this guy's really starting to get a little a little I just nutty. Want to kill some bloody monsters, you know. We've been standing around here just like blabbering about. Oh, you know, this D Gizmo, movie, does he yeah. have any of his? I'd like uh, to go kill some damn ideal. monsters. Pills. We've been in here for what? Like necessary medication. Yes. Forty-five right. minutes. We haven't killed a single bloody monster. I, I want to kill some freaking monsters. In case he does right. get out of control. I think beast, it's. The beast it's I think it's time. For him to have his medication. Gizmo? Hey, you yep. keep your hands off me, mate. Yeah, hey, get Gizmo. off! Get 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 At least you might have knocked. Well, I did. And your father told me to open the door and come in. He would. Uh, would you mind handing me those things there? Surely. Thanks. Is father expecting you? Yes. Would you mind helping me with this zipper? Of course. You're an awful long time with that. Mission completed, sorry to say. Hello, I'm sorry I'm late. Well, now that Dad's here, will you excuse me? Oh, surely. 
I hope these are what you wanted. Dr. Stevens. I've read your books very thoroughly, Doctor, on which, incidentally, your photograph appears. Well, maybe it's just as well you know who I am. Have you charted the area around Baker's Cove? The area where the accidents occurred? No, I don't think we got around to that. We've only been here two years, you know. Well, you've mapped other areas in this vicinity. A few years ago, a submerged deposit of uranium ore was found along this coast. Is there any evidence of a similar deposit along here? No, not to my knowledge. Why? Uh, this morning, I made a test dive over the area where the accidents have taken place. They weren't accidents. There's a shaft of light coming up out of the ocean. I have reason to believe that it's nuclear in character. Now, any object coming in contact with this light would be subject to extreme radiation. I believe this light killed three men. Incredible. You say you made a... Close examination of this light? Not as close as I would have liked to. It was being guarded by a sea serpent. A hideous beast that defies description. Oh, Doctor, if I didn't know that you were a scientist of high standards, I'd say that you were the victim of the ridiculous phantom stories that are running wild around the village. Professor, you say you've read my stories. Indeed, I have. Much of my work is based on your findings. Well, then you must remember my experiments on activating the hydrogen isotopes in heavy water. Oh, but that was on a miniature scale in the laboratory with a lot of equipment. But on the ocean floor, I proved it could be done. I used artificial means to start the reaction. Then you think that with a submerged deposit of uranium ore, you can get the same reaction on a much larger scale? A weapon like this could destroy anything coming in contact with it. Oh, fantastic. Once the chain reaction had started, it could continue indefinitely. As a matter of fact, keep growing larger. And what about the, the beast down there? Was he man-made too? I believe so. Since marine life lives in a constant flow of heavy water, the effect of radiation on it would be completely different than it is on humans. Well, that's, that's your theory on mutations, isn't it, Doctor? Yes. And if what I believe is true, this monster that I saw in the ocean was a mutation of some sea creature. You see, it draws its energy from the nuclear light itself, just as plant life needs the sun to grow on. Well, have you any evidence to support this fantastic theory? I created such a mutant in my own laboratory. Oh, come now, Doctor. I destroyed it, just as this creature must be destroyed, and the knowledge that went into creating it. Do you think that that knowledge might have come out of my college? Since I am head of that college, obviously. Professor, in science we look for one thing and find another. We split an atom and the hydrogen bomb has evolved. We set up a simple experiment or study on underwater life. Something new and horrible is created. I feel as if I and my Experiments are suspect. Well, I haven't overlooked that possibility. If it were a matter of pure science alone, I'd be inclined to examine you most closely. However, there's another element. Another element? The person responsible for this terrible weapon has offered it for sale to the highest bidder. For sale? I don't believe it. Hello. Yes, Mr. Grant. We'll have them ready for you in the morning. That's right. Goodbye. Grant's going to make a dive in the morning. He's borrowing some equipment from us. We, we can't let him go down there. Why not? Well, in view of what you told me, I, I thought, well, it's not safe for him to go down there. Why are you staring at me, doctor? You seem so skeptical when I told you the results of my test dive. Yet you show genuine concern for Mr. Grant's safety. Good day.
Professor. Ethel. Did I startle you? I'm sorry. I didn't hear you come out. I forgot to tell you, when Mr. Grant wants to pick up a full set of diving equipment tomorrow. Have it ready for him. Yes, sir. And tell George and the night watchman, in case you're not here. Yes, sir. Ethel, I consider you an intelligent woman. A bit bitter, perhaps. No great lover of mankind, but still intelligent. I'd like your opinion. What would you consider a just punishment for a man or woman who would betray his fellow man for money? One who would take a scientific discovery of monumental scope and use it to line his or her pockets? I, I don't know. Would you consider death just? Well? No matter. You can tell me some other time. Mr. Grant, please. He shouldn't have come here. I may have been followed. There was a time when you would have welcomed me under any circumstances. They've got federal men investigating. They must know something. They're planning on making a dive tomorrow. A dive? They've got to be stopped. How? That's your problem. You shouldn't have come here. I had to. I got a cable from Antwerp. I'm to fly there in two days. Uh, uh, Morph, mm. sir. It's Dr. Elixir. Back, back, to his, back to his self again, sir. Dr. Elixir. Oh, good God. Good oh. God. That DNA structure and uh, transformation is complete. Oh, is it a pleasure to see you. But oh, my God. I feel much better now. I love what, this. What love movie we're watching tonight? The F League Phantom of 10,000 10, Fathoms. Phantoms. Ooh, 10, Phantoms. The I'm not familiar with that. Oh, no, the Phantom of 10,000 Leaks are actually. Oh, good call. Oh, yes, this is my favorite movie. It's, uh, it's got a creature that is quite adventurous. And, uh, and you know, uh, it's, 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 it's uh, Oh, and it lives under the sea, doesn't it? It's yeah. one of my favorites. Yes. I love this yes, actually. And uh, he is uh, one of the uh, family of the uh, Frankenfish. Actually, so yeah. Oh, as you recall. Yes, uh, I did, uh, yeah. I so much better now. I yes. Know, this, uh, well, Doctor, we have also Dr. Moron here to Moron. assist you. Why don't everybody step over this way just for a couple of steps? Dr. Uh, Moron! Yes. Mm -hmm. well, Why did it's you such a pleasure to see you, sir. Why did you keep calling me Moron earlier? <laughs> what are you talking about? It's nothing. What are you talking about? Mm -hmm. you know. yes. It's a language barrier is what it really is, I think. But I, I highly respect your work in the uh, field of uh, radioactive uh, ocean creatures. Yes. Oh, yes. Well, okay, then. And, and, and reptile uh, experimentation. Yes. Uh, speaking of which, uh, what type of reptile do you have there, sir? This, uh, it was a common iguana, but now, uh, I don't know Good what. Good God. What is this creature? This Who are these people? Is this thing yeah. safe? Should we be like alarmed? Ivan, Ivan, shoot that bloody thing. Yeah. Kill it. Should we, is this thing safe or are we in any danger from this creature? It's similar to the one that's on the actual show, uh, this, this documentary this film. This one looks more real, though. Gizmo, take this. Thank you, sir. Good. That's, uh, Go. It needs a recharge anyway. Anyway, get that thing away. Back, 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 back. Take him out. Get him, get him. Get him. All right, all right. That all right. Put that thing away, put that thing away, put that thing away, put that thing away. Let's okay, very good. Ah! Oh. Back. Hmm. Back. Earlier, uh, Gizmo had uh, informed me that there were some 
people or, or, or some blips that you call them on your screen that was um, down by the lake or something, right? You picked yes, up the, uh, uh, the radar did pick up uh, different types of organisms that were uh, down by the lake, uh, quite near the boat and the uh, uh, house that we've been witnessing in the cottage uh, uh, in the same movie, in the Phantom of 10,000 Leagues. You don't suppose anyone was doing any radioactivity <laughs> experiments, do you? <laughs> oh, absolutely. No, yes, you, weren't any, you weren't around, well, so that I, wouldn't no, be I happening. Wouldn't, I wouldn't know anything about doing radioactive experiments with uh, turtles and other little sea creatures. But we may need have you. Have them grow into ferocious monsters. I wouldn't know it anything may, about that. It wouldn't. may have been one of Dr. Elixir's experiments that had, had gone haywire that created the Phantom from 10,000 Leagues. What no, were, I think it was Ted Stevens. Yes. 10,000 Stevens. Imagine that. What we're probably going to have to do is send Ivan, who has battled these creatures many times, even as a child. We're going to have to send you down there and see if you can find whatever is down there. Make sure he takes the NERF. The NERF, yes. yes and bring us a sample. Hopefully living tissue, if at all possible. Uh, is that possible? NERF vaporized. No, no vaporize. Vaporize. No vaporize. My country vaporize. No. Well, you vaporize. First bring here that we give you money. And then vaporize. Eh? Rubles. Eh, rubles. Rubles. And then vaporize, okay? You do not vaporize in my face. Next. Rubles first, oh, then vaporize. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Donathan. Donathan. Yes. She's taking your if here, Ivan happens to vaporize these creatures, mm -hmm. could you possibly turn the vapor back into the creature in case? Is it possible? Well, with the souls, they can be directed into any inanimate object. So it would uh, merely be a matter of of my powers. I see. I see. Powers. Yes. Explain these powers. I, mean, I was. It sounds like some kind of mystical thing. You know? I, I was trained on, so I, I, on the planet Zintar Twelve by a group of mermaids to learn how to speak. Mermaids. <laughs> to learn how to speak to the dead. Can I meet some of these mermaids? Um, yes, yes, we can but go on the Look over there. That's where you need to you explain to uh, these yes. people, not to us. I we was, don't care. I was, I was on a planet <laughs> called Zentar 12. I was raised by mermaids and taught how to speak to the dead. <laughs> um, the mermaids and the dead helped me get through class, and um, a lot of my fellow students were jealous because it helped me cheat. Oh, oh, sorry. Okay. What we've got to do, because the police are here apparently and they're telling us that we have to go. Uh, Ivan, you head off down to the beach and uh, see if you bring not vapor. No vaporize. No, I just need some, some type of tissue to That's get right. a DNA sample. That's right. To ensure so we're that going the doctor to go back is not responsible. People. We can people to experiment on that. We're going to go back. The people are, yes, I was a people at one point, but we're going to go back to the movie. Find. The Phantom from 10,000 Leagues. me to bring some vital information from you. I'm not ready. You were ready enough to accept a considerable sum of money in advance, weren't you? I won't know anything until I can get into King's lab. Then get in. Butt your way in. I tried that with his secretary. It didn't work. You're facing some serious problems, George. You have two days in which to find the answers. I'll be leaving for Europe the day after tomorrow. Where will I find you? I'll be spending most of my time soaking up a little sun at Colby's Point. That's where we used to meet, remember? I remember. For quite a while, we were just a man and a woman, weren't we? I didn't know then they could put beauty and poison so cleverly together in one package. <laughs> Remember. No, that's okay.
matters that we're actually seeing. Is it all right to talk here? Go ahead. I can tell you what you want to know. Oh, crap! Some audio guy. Some, some, some professor. My caller feels the same way about it. I'm sure he will. Dr. Stevens is very observing. He's a bright young man. Sometimes I think he's too bright. Too bright? I don't understand what you mean. Oh, just an old coot thinking out loud. You know, science is a devouring mistress. She devours all who seek to fathom her mysteries. And for every secret she reveals, she demands a price. A price that a scientist must be prepared to pay. Even at the cost of his life. Or the life of others who stand in the way of his search. You, you say that almost as though you were threatening me. You? <laughs> what nonsense. <laughs> Good evening. Good evening. Good evening. I dare say you two won't mind being left alone. Beautiful. Which is a good opening line for any date. Oh, I've got more. But they require an entirely different setting. How about a nice walk along the ocean? He may fool the rest of you with his soft voice, but not me. He's a killer. You can't accuse King of Treason just because you hate him. I'll accuse him of anything. He sent my only son out in a squall to get his filthy ocean specimens. To proof, Ethel. I need proof. He works behind those locked doors of his. If I could just get in there, I could get you all the proof you want. We may be able to figure out something along those lines. If I could show you how to make a wax impression of those locks, could you do it sometime tomorrow? I'm sure I could. Come on.
I'd better be getting home. It's late. It's been a lovely evening. Yes, it was pleasant. And it did go fast. Mostly in talk about my father and the college, now that I think of it. You've learned a great deal about him. <laughs> natural curiosity about a fellow scientist. There were some very pleasant moments of silence, too. We really should go. All right. Call Bill Grant. You'll find him at the hotel. Tell him I'll wait here for his instructions. Hurry, please. They're burned worse than the fisherman was. I think it's about time we did something about this. We? Am I off your list of suspects? Earlier today, I had a long talk with Washington. You were the topic of conversation. Am I to be shot at sunrise? They told me to cooperate with you. You could have floored me. They put you on this case, too, and didn't even tell me about it. I thought they would eventually. Apparently, they wanted two completely indifferent investigations of this. One from a scientific point of view and one from a, a gumshoe, government style. Pacific College of Oceanography. You know, this spear may be our first real break. Kind of narrows the field down, doesn't it? Yes, it seems so. I think I'll take it down to the crime lab and have them dust it for prints. How about you going down to the college and picking up some diving equipment? I checked with Professor King, and he said the night watchman would give it to us. OK. What do you say we make our dive about 6 AM? Yeah. Bill, I made a test dive yesterday. It's pretty grim. There's a shaft of radioactive light down there. Touch it, and you're dead. And if that isn't enough, there's some kind of a, uh, an animal standing guard over it. Then there really is a basis for these phantom stories? I'm afraid there is. This'll take care of it. And I won't miss. Now, my principal interest is the light ray. Now, you'll have to draw whatever it is down there away so I can get a good look at that light. And Bill, now, it isn't going to be easy or pleasant. Neither is this.
Still want to go in? Feel all right? Okay. I'm picking up King and his assistant. What for? The poison in that mask came from the college, and so did the spear that was fired at you. So we can prove a charge of attempted murder. That's not what we're after. We want to know who created that thing and how to destroy it. Don't you understand, Bill? It's the knowledge, the know-how that went into making that ray. That's the real danger. Yeah, it all ties together. We were getting too nosy, so King tried to get rid of both of us. Maybe it was George. Maybe both of them. Secretary could be tied into a throw, we know. No, I rule her out. We were well talking. She tells me she can prove that King's behind this whole thing. Prove it? How? Oh. I rigged up a set of keys for her to get into his laboratory. She tells me all the proof I need is right in that room. I hope she's right. We'll know tonight. One of the spear guns is missing. I saw King take one out yesterday. That's odd. I thought I saw you carrying one when you left last night. You see too much, Ethel. You should wear blinkers. Is he in yet? No.
I've got to get in there today. Break the door down. He mustn't know, Ethel. This is important to me, as important as staying alive. I can't help you. This is serious. I'm in trouble. You like that, don't you? I've too much trouble of my own to worry about yours. crazy boat that they're driving around in. What do you think about this? It looks like the same boat that the radioactivation got the people's audience. Mm. Do you mm -hmm. think it might be the exact same boat? I don't know, you know. I don't know. Absolutely looks the same. Looks like they were mm -hmm. in the same boat together. Uh, but th there's so many suspicious things going on down at this beach. Yes, I know. Every character that seems to pop up, you know, has just like got some insidious motive and, you know, Somebody's gonna end up with a spear gun in the back. Yeah, I right. certainly hope so, because whoever shot this movie needs to get a little bit less of the shots of the guys swimming in those little shorts from behind. Ah, yeah, yeah. Right. Yeah. It's the last thing and I want. Look, the, uh, oh. the, the federal agent there and the, uh, and the scientist look like they were getting a bit chummy, don't they? <laughs> anyway, oh, it's I is right. returning. Ah, oh, thank God. Oh. I'm, I'm catching the beach bombs. <laughs> What did you go up there, Ivan? Where did you find these guys, Ivan? This thing's making me really paranoid. Have you been, have you been inhaling something? Dude, dude. What is all the smoke Are you around from here? Dude. What is that bald dude all about? Gizmo? Well, actually, uh, he uh, picked up. Are, the, are these oh, the blips? I believe you know, these were the blips that I was picking up on my standing these device. Things. What are you standing there for? Scan these well, I, 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 I can pretty much analyze without using my scanner, sir. Don't need to These are normal uh, carbon-based life form hey, look, organisms like. here. Although yeah. they yeah. seem yeah, yeah, to be intoxicated on some substance. Oh, look, though. and they seem to be captivated by the tra uh, trailing uh, device like the light, here. Don't they? they do like the light. Uh, More yeah. entertaining, actually. Okay. Okay. Tell me now. What are you doing down by the lagoon? Did you see any things strange down there? I wasn't doing anything, dude. All I was doing was just being, and I haven't done anything since this morning. Well, I can believe that. What about it? Yeah, certainly. But have you seen on the couch all day? But have you, you know, seen yeah. anything strange? Like they have like used this, a remote control like or something. Yeah. Like dude. This, this, have you seen anything that looks anything similar to it? Looks like my cousin Eddie's spaghetti. A lot like this. It had big spiky things and dude, Did you like, capture it? It was walking so like, it, was, it was like drippy water. No, it was actually swimming, I, was like, I think. I was like, dude. Was so, it, was it, you don't even need a snorkel. I'm not really leg? sure. Was it humping anyone's leg, this creature? I didn't see it doing Yet. any humping. Sea urchin. No. Beach bum stone. Yeah. Ah. <laughs> oh, mm. uh, Tetrahydrocannabinol, I believe, sir, was the, would be the culprit in this case. Perhaps some lactic acid diethylmate. Well, no vaporized yet. I vaporized. No. I think the dude had a bad case of nitrogen narcosis. <coughs> nitrogen narcosis. <coughs> well, the only way to cure that is by inhaling some sort of uh, fumigating substance. They're bad case of narcotics. So yes, what I'm thinking is, have you, I vaporize. have you fellows ever been vaporized uh, before? Hold on, Ivan, hold on. <laughs> hold your vapors. I'll tell you what, Ivan. Hold on. Like I'm into that. Maybe, maybe I just broke their legs. Hold off for a minute. I'll tell you what, though. Take these guys out into the waiting room. Move. And then Move. come back. You. And then, no. Thank you, fellas. Yeah, yeah I don't just think broken so. their legs. <laughs> no, wow. certainly they are, have not spawned from the <laughs> undersea creature. Wow, no. man, I caught a contact from those guys. Boy. Anyway, so did they did. Eureka. See, Eureka. Mm. Apparently, they did see something in the water with a snorkel a dude. Whatever. Well, I wouldn't a dude. have anything to do with a, some kind of mutant, you know, radioactive monster into the water. What would I have to do with that? That's what we're trying to ascertain. 
Diablo de Fuego. I mean, doctor. Um, yes. So, uh, anyway, uh, this creature is still very dangerous, and it keeps... It doesn't seem to be getting any bigger at all. I can't really tell, but it seems like the people have to swim right up to it to get attacked by it. And I think it may have something to do with... It may be a radio beacon that it sends out, and it sends a signal right to the human brain, and, and it's almost like a, 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 a tracking device that sucks the person towards uh, the, mouth, uh, the mouth of the beast. A tracking It is device. possible. Yes, that's true. I didn't yeah. equip any Telepathy, sorry. Telepathy. Uh, uh, if I did, like uh, you know, create a radioactive <laughs> monster under the ocean, I most certainly wouldn't have given it tracking ability. I see. Mm -hmm. uh, Could be an anomaly, uh, an mutation that occurred you know, throughout true. the experiment. So anyway, uh, how, how are you feeling? He hasn't been saying a word. Apparently, after uh, uh, Donathan Edgers, our, uh, our mystic here, uh, seems to be slowing down a little bit. I think something may have happened to him. Uh, are you feeling okay? I'm all right. I was just pondering what could possibly be in that lake. And maybe if it's not a sinister plan of some other monster. Mm. You know, I think I'm wondering more what was in those cookies than in the lake. That cookies could be part of it, too. Hmm. <laughs> uh, <laughs> what do you think? So, um... I'll tell you what, we're gonna get to the bottom of this, or to out at the top, but we're gonna get back to the beast, the phantom from 10,000 leagues, and we'll be back. Oh, that's a shame. I'd like to talk to your father. to speak to me? Well, yes. I thought you might be interested in the results of the dive we made this morning. The very fact that you're here now tells me that your phantom, as well as your light ray, is a myth, a hoax. <laughs> they both exist. The light ray, as you call it, is very definitely atomic and deadly. The only reason I'm alive is because I made sure I didn't come in contact with it myself. It's all too preposterous for serious thought. Phantom, marine mutations, death rays, utter nonsense. I'm afraid, Doctor, that you are the victim of an overwhelming imagination. Good day, Dr. Stevens. look well, George. Or is it just that I don't find you attractive anymore? Nothing's going right, Wanda. I don't know if I can get what they want. They won't like it. And when they don't like something, they're liable to be a little extreme in showing it. They might even come to the same conclusion that I came to last night. That you're of no use to us. Last night? Ethel. King's secretary was crying a little heart out to Mr. Grant. I saw them. Government man? I couldn't hear what they were saying, but I'm pretty sure I caught your name. She knows enough about me. Evidently, she hasn't told him what she knows yet. What do I do, Wanda? I know what I do. I'll be here tomorrow, too. But don't come unless you have something for me.
You're working very late tonight, aren't you, Ethel? I uh, had some work to clean up. Good night. What's wrong? Oh, I feel so old, so tired, defeated. Dr. Stevens, I want to apologize to you for my rudeness this afternoon. I've had a few very trying days. Of course, I understand. Maybe I better leave. Come in. Professor King? That's right. Were you at the college tonight? Yes, for a while. Mind telling me when you left? An hour ago, I think. What's this all about? Your secretary, Miss Hall, was found murdered a short while ago. Ethel. She left the college. A few minutes later, you followed. That it? I don't grasp the significance of that fact. Do you think that I would take a human life? Willfully, deliberately? She just as well as told me you were going to kill her. She was killed with one of the college's spear guns. Am I being formally charged with this horrible thing? Not yet. But it's just a matter of time. Come on. We're just going to sit here all day. There isn't much else we can do till the sheriff gets here with his report. No, it's just like I killed Ethel myself. I rigged the keys for her to get into King's laboratory. That's it. That's what we ought to do, get into that room of his. Well, assuming that it was King, which is something I'm not ready to do, he could have destroyed everything in his laboratory if he found Ethel in there. His equipment, his notes. Don't you see, Bill, it's... It's what's in his mind or George's that's important. Notes? Wait a minute. Ethel gave me this at the restaurant. She copied it from King. Mean anything to you? Well, we solved your murder for you, Mr. Grant. Same spear gun fired both shafts. The one that tried to kill Doc here and the 
The one that got Miss Hall. Same fingerprints over both of them. They were George Thomas's, King's assistant. That was the dumbest killer you ever saw. Left the spear gun in his car. Same prints all over it. And to clinch it, he didn't come home last night. I guess I'd better put in for retirement. I sure had this one figured wrong. I called the college to tell the old man he was in the clear, but no one answered. He's probably at home. I think I'd better go tell him. Tell the old man I'm, I'm sorry. I uh, kind of have an idea where we can get George. Want to come along? Might be able to use some help. Come on. <laughs> Right. Ah, uh, did you see the spear gun thing? He shot the spear gun into the, oh, oh. And, the, the, the and the monster and the, so it's horrifying. <laughs> Apparently this thing down at our lagoon has been rectified and Ivan's on his way back in. Uh, I believe he has hopefully sent those guys back to their car or wherever they were from. And uh, yeah, it, it's getting the, the smoke from the, there's smoke coming in from I the thing. You must have vaporized yes. them with all this smoke around. The, <laughs> I recognize that smell. Yes. Ah. Uh, so did you send them back to their car? Oh, vaporized. Vaporized? Oh, no. Just broken legs, then vaporized. Oh. <laughs> yeah. oh, yeah, I see. You must have, uh, you shouldn't have breathed that in when you vaporized those two guys, because uh, now I, look at him. I mean, it has a funny feeling. Look at his eyes. <laughs> uh, I believe he's uh, intoxicated or something. Yeah, oh, goodness. Fumigated. He probably did so anyway, the particulates from the uh, matter that was left over from the vaporization yesterday. Gizmo, is that your phone ringing? Yeah, I do believe, I do believe we're, uh, uh, I'm getting a, a signal here. I, I, I have contacted. Who is it? It, it is uh, uh, Sally the Zombie Cheerleader, sir. I've contacted her on the EARSs, the uh, Enhanced Auditory Response System. Fantastic. Zombie I, Cheerleader, can you hear us? Yeah, hello. Where am I? Where are you? Zombie, you robbed a zombie. Yeah, he's, he's yeah, he's got like you know, I think he's got stuff to rob. I, I don't know, you know, he's real popular. People were screaming at him or maybe hit him or that. They were really yelling at him. Something wow. Like cool. Well, I guess sometimes you could rob a zombie because a zombie would have money if it hadn't still had its wallet in its pocket. You could. He's got a lot of fleshies because you know, like he's that popular. He's got a lot of something. So I, I don't care. He's got a lot of fleshies. I, I, think it's, I, yeah, I think it's something. see. So. You've been buying some bus tickets lately there. Uh, no, I don't know why she says that. That's not true. Yes, you did. You stuck me on the bus. You told me you told me to go away. That's what you told me. Wow. Sir, Fantastic. I just reported her location. She seems to be in Detroit. Detroit? Detroit. Yes. Uh, I, I, I understand there is a Rob Zombie concert. Hey, yeah, no, it was only a whole way ticket, man. She couldn't even spring for a round trip. What's up with that? Uh. Hmm. Oh. oh, thank oh. you, Ivan. There it is. Wow. Thank you. Really? Thank you. Uh, sometimes Ivan is useful like that. Did anybody, can I, you know, wire me some money so I can come home? Mm -hmm. or, you know, all right. Uh, yeah, there's a lot of fleshies running around here. Maybe I can clear these fleshies or something. I, oh, there's one. Come here. Come here. Dr. Elixir. Oh, I got a fleshie. Oh, hey. Come here. Oh, God, they're everywhere. Oh, wow. my God. Is she getting a uh, attack? I, 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 I don't know. It sounds like you're having quite the feast, sir. Dr. Elixir, give Gizmo the credit card number. We're going to wire you some money so that you can take another bus back here to the nation's capital. Oh, but, okay. Well, you know, don't you have to be in such a rush because, you know, I have to hide my hands for it. You know, this is like really good. Well, turning into bites here again. Get yourself. Oh, yeah. Get yourself a meal. I've got a couple hours. Yes, we're investigating a story of the 10,000 phantoms from the League of Phantoms. You got 10,000 phantoms there? Yes. Wow, it's amazing. I can them all in one little room. The, no, 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 it's a singular phantom, it's sir. the phantom, phantom from 10,000 10, leagues. leagues. What, uh, what, what leagues he belongs to, I'm not exactly sure. But what no, is, it, is it? Is it major or minor league? 
The bowling league, bowling, I believe. Bowling league. Bowling, oh, bowling baseball, league. Football, the bowling. The pin or the big ball. League of Nations. Perhaps. Yes. Big so ball, anyway, we've got to get back to this mission. Uh, stand by, uh, Sally, we and we're going to go back. Oh, okay. money. Everybody's getting sick. We're going to go back to the movie and find out what is going on. The Phantom from 10,000 Leagues. I doubt whether the trap would permit it. The trap? Knowledge sometimes has steel jaws, like a trap, and it can either destroy the hunter or the hunted. You frighten me when you talk like that. And I promise not to. Oh, here comes your Dr. Stevens. I have some news that I think will interest you. About Ethel's murder? The sheriff has proof it was George. I knew it wasn't you. Why would he want her dead? It's possible that Ethel found out that, uh, well, he, he had to silence her. Why the gloom? Dad's just been acquitted of murder. Lois, I'd like to talk to your father alone. Why? It'll only take a few minutes, dear. You better run on home. I'll follow you there. You better go, please. Ethel gave this to Mr. Grant. She said she copied it from your notes. Intensity increased readings of the light shaft. You call it HEF, Hydro Energy Force. You're quite right. There is a uranium deposit on the ocean floor. How did you activate it? That, Dr. Stevens, is my knowledge and mine alone. But it must be destroyed. It started with a simple animal experiment. One of yours, Doctor. I thought so. And I advanced way beyond the scope of your imagination. Didn't I? Don't tell me how you created it. Tell me how to destroy it. I don't know that I want to. But, Doctor, you're not free to do as you wish. Five people have died as a result of that thing. You're quite right. But just give me one hour to think about it. It's a decision that's not easy to make. I have no other choice. Thank you. I'll meet you here. And, Doctor, stay with Lois. She'll need you. I know Dad's in some kind of trouble and needs me. I know it. But your father asked you to wait here. I can't. We've got to find him. Do you know where he might be? Well, he uh, possibly could have gone to the lab. Well, then I'm going there. Come on, now, wait a minute. Do I have to go alone, or are you coming with me? Perhaps you're right. You can't do any good here just waiting. Let's go.
Ken, what happened? That ship had just exploded. Lois, I've got to find your father. You can't mean that Dad had anything to do with this. I haven't got time to talk. Ken! That's one of God's creatures, Professor? No, Andy, that's one of man's follies, and I pray God there'll never be another one. Goodbye, Andy. Up here sooner or later. What do you want of me? Just a confession to Ethel Hall's murder. We found a spear gun in your car. Ballistic tests and fingerprints pretty well tie you into it, mister. You weren't very clever about it. Neither was your girlfriend, Wanda. No, I guess I wasn't. I should have learned more of my teacher. He killed in wholesale lots. What are you talking about? Professor King. He planted that thing out in the ocean. What's he mean, Bill? I think I know. Can you handle him yourself, Sheriff? What happened? Where's Dad? He left a few minutes ago, Miss King. Did he say where he was going? No, he just busted up the place and left in a hurry. But why destroy all this? Experiments is life's work. I'm afraid only your father can explain that. But I still don't understand. Do you know why he did this? I think I do. What a mess. King? Yeah, I left a few minutes ago. Probably headed for the beach. We're on our way there now. Let's take my car. Come on, we can hurry. Professor King?
known in time. Perhaps I could have stopped him. I know he meant this power to be used to help humanity, not destroy it. I'm sure he did. And he paid for his mistake. Nature has many secrets that man mustn't disturb. And this was one of them. I know. Only he too could have understood. I'm sure he does, Lois. That's why he took his secret with him. Finally, the end. What a wonderful, wonderful film about this dangers of these creatures and the radiation and how they can destroy it. I still don't quite get it. Uh, usually, we have Ivan vaporize the creature. I take it out with a sword. Gizmo outsmarts it. Or apparently, she puts something in their cookies. All right, I did it. Yes. But you know what? It's always about monsters, monsters, monsters. You gotta go get them. What are you gonna do after you get the monsters? Don't you think the monsters would like to maybe have like new clothes or something, or maybe fix up their coffin? But no, all you guys always want to do is just go kill them. It's got to be more to this. No, story. no, no. Doctor Elixir says monsters. that we kill study the monsters, them. Yeah. We, Ivan Vapor, we don't kill anything usually unless it's a I'm problem. I was wrong, <laughs> Mr. Bola. I was wrong all along. All the time. Oh God. Elixir. I Wrong. thought I was doing the work of good. I thought I was doing something good for society. And, yeah. uh, What's in and box? it turns out all they want What's to do, box? the military Whoa. wants to use my uh, death ray to kill people. Imagine that, a death ray to kill people. So what depressed. are they, animals? What do you have in this box, uh, Doctor? I, I, I am going to go kill this monster using this. Ah! And don't try to stop me either. <laughs> no, Doctor, wait, hold on. Wait, wait, wait. Let, let me see this weapon sir. again. This... Is looks like a homemade good, bomb. Good grief! This is what is this called? It's, in it's a, the uh, only way to kill the monster, eradicate oh, the, uh, the oh, activated oh, uranium, and oh. uh, and, uh, and to kill myself. I mean, uh, 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 you know, uh, put things right with the world. Because quite frankly, I'm a, uh, I, uh, I just I'm a. Uh, Doctor, the <laughs> I'll tell you what. what Doctor, I, done? I created take a beast. He's been, oh, he's, taking, he's been taking his pills. Oh, yeah, yeah. God, uh, take them. Open the box. Open the box. Here, here, period. Doctor. Look, look. Here, here, here. Give me the box. Hold up your hand. Take this. It's bad plan. It's Do you have plan. any matches or a lighter? I'll tell you what, Doctor. I've got a match, yes. Solve the problem for all of us and make yourself the hero. My face on a horse's rear end. That's the truth. That's a good match, Senor. But take this weapon down to the pond where we believe our creature, that is similar to the one in this film, mm -hmm. is plant it and put some food on top of it. Some of her cookies, her famous magical cookies that made everybody sick. And I imagine she gave some of these cookies to the zombie cheerleader also and then put her on a bus to Detroit mm -hmm. to see Rob Zombie, but she thought she meant rob a zombie. So she, rob so she robbed a zombie, and it turns out our little, our little Countess Contessa here wants to have the spotlight for herself. So you know what, there you go. Go ahead, go ahead, take a bow. Why is it always them? Kill the monster, there's got to be the All right, all right, gonna have to be yeah. Doctor. Take your weapon, go down to the lagoon, blow up this creature, and report back. I'll have Gizmo track you. If no, you need I'm, a, I'm sure I can find a boat somewhere. Everybody else that walks down to the beach seems to find the same bloody boat, <laughs> so right. I'm sure it's still down there. I'll <laughs> take the same bloody boat. It's probably the same oh, one right there. Like, goodbye. It's a goodbye. Goodbye. bad plan. He's goodbye. taking pills again. Yes, he, you know, yeah. he, he needs to sometimes, but uh, good job. Um, apparently, what we're going to have to do 
what we're going to have to do is, uh, what we have is Gizmo has done a scan of this creature, and we put it into our 3D modeling computer machine. And check this out. We have come up with a scan and made a 3D model of this is what this creature looks like. This is its Indeed. face. If you happen to be swimming in the pool or the lake or any place like that and you see this coming at you, then you know that this is one of the phantoms from League from 10,000 Phantoms. Swim away as fast yes. as you can. As fast Indeed. as possible. This creature could be quite deadly. No, you the, call Ivan. 555 five, yes. five, Ivan. I come vaporize. 555 five, five, Ivan. We'll send this guy right here, right over to wherever you're coming from or wherever you are. Mm -hmm. And if you have one of these, you will have one of these no more. No more! That no is, more! That is quite the fierce no. application, sir. So anyway, this beast uh, the, in the film was actually kind of white. And I noticed it had bubbles mm -hmm. coming out of, like, near its rear end. There were bubbles coming up, too. What do you make of this, uh, Gizmo? Oh, indeed, sir, flagellation. You know, all living organisms experience flagellation of some type. So I'm uh, quite certain that any bubbles that were emitted from this creature under the sea... Hmm. Uh, does this have anything the, to do with the submergency of when it goes down and it comes back up to the top of the water again? No, uh, they actually develop gas just like any normal human uh, or any other organism that develops gas through the process of digestion. Ah, so you're saying that after it eats the people, it goes, into, it goes into their tummy and... It's farting. I see. Exactly, sir. Precisely. So... I wonder if it would be possible, Gizmo, if you could get some samples uh, down by the lake after Me, the sir? doctor, the doctor, if you see bubbles, try to capture some of these bubbles and see if you can, can get some of the DNA from the... Can we send Contessa or, or someone else to get those samples, please, sir? We need it's to collect... Idea. We're trying to collect <laughs> fart bubbles, or what we're trying to collect, actually, fart bubbles um, mm -hmm. that may contain mm -hmm. some of the DNA of these people and or the creatures so we can figure out another way to come up with a, something to wipe these out with. Anyway, next week, we're going to be showing the brain that wouldn't die. Mm. And we're going to have with us special guest from the dark side, the legendary Count Gore Duval. Yes, let's hear it for Count Gore Duval. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, oh, oh. Count Gore. Oh, so, no, he's back. Oh, Mr. Dyer. The brain that wouldn't die. Okay. I can't wait to see this film. It's the doctor! Yes, I blew, up the you blew up the monster. You blew up the monster. I've killed the monster. I've killed the monster. You know, that's all I need to give, you know, give me self a lift and uh, <laughs> get back to my old self. Perhaps we should leave you blow up little old lady. Did the monster... Well, you know, that's the way it is with live television. We are now, live on television right now. Well, this very minute, that's right. We are broadcasting But we live. must go now because we are off to find more monsters. So next week, the brain that wouldn't die. Tonight, the Phantom from 10,000 Leagues and Count Gore Duval next week. Please tune in and turn on and turn on your televisions and we'll see you next time at the Monster Madhouse. Yeah.
the canines in here. Right. So, where we say you guys go? And we never watch Monster Mag. We jam out with our clams out. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do that. I don't think they knew that. Yeah. <laughs> April Fool's here. Let me yeah, go. Yeah, really, yeah. <laughs> okay, E-Man.